I'm Rowan from Square Balloon and today I want to talk to you about SCSS. Um, in this case we're using Joomla and Gantry 5 and we're using SCSS but it would work on any platform that uses SCSS. But I'm going to talk to you through it um, in, um, in the way we do things and I'm going to explain to you why we do it that way. Um, so first things first is the, the structure of it. We're using the 7 to 1 um, strategy, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, methodology. Uh, so all I've done here, I've created a custom, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, and each time I've done an at import, and we just do the, um, the folder name and then the index. Um, so first thing people sometimes ask me is um, when you use this, is an import slower, should you use that? It is in CSS, um, this is SCSS, it's pre-compiled into a CSS file, so it will not slow you down in any way, shape or form. You could have as many of these as you wanted and it wouldn't change the loading time. Um, but let's talk about the folder names first. So I've called them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The reason I've done that is because I like to have them in the order that they're actually loaded. It helps me to remember um, if I'm going to create a variable, for example, I might say $red is the variable red, and I'm going to give it, assign it um, a color value, um, and then I want to use it later on I, and it doesn't work, I want to know, wait, did I assign that variable earlier than the time I called it because if I assigned it afterwards then it's unaware of that variable when it tries to call it. So anyway, uh, uh, really you just need to worry about the names of them but I get the numbers first so I can keep them in the correct order so I can remember the load order of the files. And again here I put them in the correct order so they load in the right order. So let's have a, a quick look at the index so I'll just show you how that works. So I'll go into base straight away and index is just called underscore index.scss. So I'll edit it just to show you it. But the most important thing to remember is that even though it has an underscore and a dot .scss, you do not need to include that in your custom. So as you can see, I've just put the word index. I haven't put the underscore and I haven't put dot .scss. Um, that's just a format that SCSS uses, um, which is the underscore, and obviously the file extension is what everything uses to understand what file it is. So I've got the number one dot .base slash index, and it will know to get this index file. And the reason I do that is because I add imports into my index file. So I've got reset and I've got global. Um, not the best example. I wonder if there's, I don't know how many are on this actual website, to be honest with you. Uh, components. So there's a few in components. So I've got my index here. Um, and in this case, uh, I've actually got another folder and another index. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Because I like to keep everything structured and organized. So this is... Um, component we're using called DP Calendar in Joomla. Um, it's pretty useful. Um, and in this case, I've got another index. Again, I did not need to um, tell it. I just told it slash index. And in here, I'm calling two different um, things from the same folder. So I'm calling full calendar, full module, and yet again, no underscore, no dot .scss. So hopefully that message has gone in. I won't keep repeating it. Um, the reason I do this um, structure is because it's really easy for me to just um, comment out or uh, add an import um, in a different way and it's really easy for me to just keep everything organized but mostly the, the main thing is this custom file I don't need to keep editing it and adding stuff I just add the index file and I know that it's going to go in here and get the stuff it needs so I will never have to change this custom file for any other website we build because we always follow the structure of the folders and the index custom will never get changed I can just copy and paste this over and over again. Uh, obviously the thing, things inside will change, um, but normally as a starting point I would have custom, my folders and my index all set up. So now we've got over that structure, uh, I'm going to talk you through why that structure. So, um, uh, SCSH1, so SAS architecture, I wonder if it shows you it. Um, so there are some, there's, there's a few different variants of this, so some people call it abstracts and some people call it vendors and base and layouts and pages and themes and blah 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 um, it's a 7 to 1 pattern here, let's see if that's the same so this one is using base and components and layouts and pages and themes and utils and vendors um, so I, I've seen loads of different ones of these and I decided to do the one we've decided so in this, th these guys are saying they're using utils and they're using variables so they're using SAS variables um, and SAS functions. For me, this doesn't make much sense because you're calling the variables so late that buttons now 
cannot use these variables because it's loaded after the components. Um, perhaps they've just put these in their own order for alphabetical or something, and perhaps main CSS does it differently. But I preferred to have it in the right order, which is why I uh, renamed my files with one two three four five six seven. And to take you through it, um, I'll just we'll show you how the other guys describe it because it might help. Um, but basically, abstracts um, contain no actual styles. They're just SAS mechanisms that define um, styles in other directories, so helpers. So global variables, functions, and mixins. But they must be global, basically, because they're at the beginning. Um, they could all be a partial file, but they don't have to be. It depends on something you've got. Um, but one of the main reasons for doing this is um, to keep the file structured, but also to keep them maintainable. So in the future, if I come back to this uh, website, I'll have a good guess at where everything is stored. And if my colleagues go on this, they'll have a good guess at where everything's stored. If we're all following the same methodology, it becomes really easy for us to pick up each other's work and just work out which file things are in. You can remember the old days when everything would be in one CSS file and you'd have comments and stuff to try and help you sort it out. And then you'd be like, did I put it there? Did I put it there? Where is it? And then you'd have your responsive CSS at the bottom and you know you just don't have to work like that anymore um, so it's maintainable is really why I'm doing it so in many cases you'll see me do something that may appear that I'm writing a little bit more code but for me it just seems like it'll be more maintainable in the future to do it that way um, anyway onto vendors so third-party um, style sheets uh, project users so if you want to use bootstrap or something like that you might put that in the vendors um, folder um, again, um, uh, like on, on our one, do we have vendors? We have vendors at the end. Uh, it's, it's possible that we could change that and move that forward because you would normally be overwriting those styles, I would imagine, in some cases. So it might be worth having that a bit earlier, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I'm not sure why that's come seventh. I've possibly made a mistake. Um, and then base contains uh, boilerplate used throughout the entire site. So project-wide typography, style sheets, or universally resets, or normalized CSS, all of those things you might use. Um, you'd probably stick that, I, personally, I, it's number three, I don't know if you'd load it as number three, or that's just the order they've written it, but if you're normalizing stuff, I'd probably do that before I do the vendor stuff, because you're gonna normalize the vendor stuff by accident, potentially. Um, layout contains f files for different layouts uh, or aspects of the sites. So it might not be necessarily the entire page layout, but just a certain section or something like that. And this is a bit which my colleagues often find hard when I'm teaching them this. They're like, what's the difference between a layout and a component? And I try to tell them that components are often um, reusable parts. So like a button could be a component because it's reusable. Um, and it could be other things like, um, like a card, card layout or something like that. You know, you see card layouts with an image and some text and a title. That sort of thing would be a component because it's reused in a few different places maybe in the same section there's three different card layouts um, or four or whatever so you would just style it once in a component uh, folder and then call it card layout or something like that pages where page specific styles reside so uh, in some cases we might say um, we have like the, a hero image or something in, in, in every single page and then on the contact page it has a completely different style to the heading or something like that so then we would just say okay the hero is a component we'll use that there but then particularly on the contact page we'll be a bit more specific with the css and we will restyle the heading or something like that it's not the best example but um oh there you go in fact this is the example that they've used as well um that would be um that would be where i'd think about using it often you'd see that the home page is quite different to other pages um you might want to style the other pages first and the home page last and then you might have some pages which override those things so again i would probably go into the pages uh, folder create individual scss files for those pages uh, one thing is it's really easy to copy and paste them to another site or design another thing is it's really easy to um, comment out the import and get rid of those styles if you think something is broken because you're doing it in such a modular way if you find that something is broken either your scss is not working it's not compiling you could just comment things out comment individual files out and go oh it's that file there is the problem you can if, if you've got a lot of say uh let me give you an example uh, if i open the custom if my scss is not compiling and i'm having an issue 
I would probably come here and just comment out the latter half of it. Upload it and see if it's still broken. If it isn't, then I know it's probably one of these files. I might then uncomment those two, send it up. If I still don't have problems, I know it's one of those two. And you know, then I'll just obviously get rid of one and then finally the other. But that's the quickest way to locate where that issue is. So that's why it's um, useful as a troubleshooting thing as well as a maintainable thing. Um, and themes is when the site has multiple themes, so light, the light and dark, for example, stuff like that. Um, you might have logged in or whatever they're saying here, but yeah, they're saying night mode as well. Night mode is the most common one, I'd say. Um, you might want to, I, I've seen it before where admins are logged in and you have um, like the background goes red or something, so they know that there's a chance they can break something, but yeah, things like that. Uh, I'd be honest with you, it's not something we use tons and tons, but um, that's okay because it's kind of used when you want all of these things. Even if the directories are empty, they still stick with the same uh, methodology. So that is pretty much that. I just wanted to explain how we work and why we work like that. Uh, so ours might be slightly different and entirely up to you how you do things. We are always evolving and changing, so we might do that as well. So we've got our color scheme in one called Utils and some variables um, so our color scheme just to give an example of what we might do uh, okay it's not really a very good uh, color scheme in this particular website we only need to override a little bit but normally you would see us um, doing like uh, red and then darker so stuff like that so we'll always be um, always be calling it red 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 and just sort of like double dash and then we'll be doing the change that we see and then obviously in my IDE you can actually see the colors next to reds over here but um, if you couldn't it, you'd be able to understand uh, just by looking at the, the text basically um, so yeah that's that um, I'll just show you layouts so we've got a footer here we've got a navigation and post footer so there's just some things that we needed to change must have been background colors or fonts or probably not fonts I imagine background colors but if you change the background colors perhaps font colors as well perhaps the links and stuff like that components we've just got a search one and we've got a couple of layouts for our calendar um, and then on pages we actually didn't need them on this site it's quite a simple site themes as well is fine vendors we didn't have any again like I said I probably wouldn't put that last because um, it doesn't make much sense because we're probably going to override it if it's bootstrap for example chances are we would override like almost certainly we would change the fonts for example on different websites or the colors so probably we'd put that earlier on um, maybe three I would say we put that anyway we haven't here maybe it's a mistake we'll check later um, but I hope that helps um, if you want to learn more about this and read more about it just google the seven to one uh, I'm saying SCSS you can say SAS not much difference between the two um, so yeah there's, there's plenty out there to look up um, they're all slightly different frustratingly but um, worth, uh, worth reading on them anyway in case you learn some more stuff if you do learn some more stuff please come back and write in the comments tell me I learned this amazing thing you should think about that and if you found this useful please write that in the comments as well so I know to create more videos and if you didn't find it useful write something in the comments so I know how I can improve um, but if you did find it useful please subscribe we're only a small company take a bit of time to do this tutorials to help other people and also to help my own staff um, but it would really help if you supported us thanks a lot